Hello cosmonauts, in this week's news update, we'll talk about the Penumbra airdrop, analyze its tokenomics, and see when we'll be able to freely use our UM. Before that, let's quickly see how to use the one-click trading now available on the Cosmos Hub, namely Osmosis. We'll also discuss a proposal currently up for a vote to integrate native Bitcoin assets and L2 on Osmosis. I've never hidden it from you, Osmosis is coming with updates that will transform the user experience. The one-click trading is just one step among many in the final implementation of smart accounts validated by governance in Proposal 796. The team's clear goal is to offer a one-click everything. I think the next step is getting it to work with like more message types other than just move it from just one-click trading to like one-click everything. That's, what, that's probably what I'm looking forward to the most. And for that, the next steps of the smart account are important for the security of our accounts. The one-click trading allows you to swap assets without having to sign a transaction on your extension wallet. The goal is to have a user experience similar to centralized exchanges like Coinbase or Binance. To use the one-click trading, go to the account settings, select one-click trading and activate it. Then, set the protection limit on the tradable volume for assets below the top 50 market cap. Beyond that, you will need to sign the transactions manually with your wallet. Also, define a duration to authorize one-click trading on this device. And if you really want to activate these features, you just have to sign this transaction. And that's how you make your trading experience on Osmosis much smoother. Now let's talk about the recent proposal from Omnity Network. This project, originating from the Internet Computer ICP, ecosystem, defines itself as an interoperability hub for Bitcoin assets and its Layer 2. For some context, as a DEX, it is strategic for Osmosis to make available as many assets as possible that are likely to generate a lot of volume. Osmosis is particularly well positioned to offer the exchange of assets from an isolated and asynchronous chain with the rest of the world. Unlike the Uniswap DEX, which has access to an ecosystem of native ERC-20 assets, Osmosis is making the opposite bet, being the DEX for non-native assets par excellence, rather than making different assets exchangeable on the same blockchain and deploying on as many blockchains as possible. Osmosis makes its DEX available not by replicating its DEX, but by making it interoperable with IBC. If Uniswap is Ethereum's DEX, Osmosis is the DEX of IBC. IBC and other types of bridges are fundamental to Osmosis. Bitcoin, being the least synchronous blockchain in the world and without deterministic finality, is complex to interoperate using IBC. Bitcoin is a particularly strategic asset for Osmosis because it is the perfect client, being an isolated chain, but also an enormous dormant capital without a DeFi ecosystem that can give use cases to the most decentralized currency in the world. This proposal offers an additional solution for the availability of both BTC and the much-anticipated Bitcoin Layer 2 tokens. It is these very Layer 2s that are part of the asynchronous blockchains typically interested in an internet of blockchains. The real clients of Osmosis are not you and me, but the token issuers, the creators of blockchains. I am preparing a video on my complete thesis about Osmosis. There is so much more to say, and I don't want to make this too long here. To conclude this proposal, Omnity is requesting permission for the unrestricted deployment of Cosmwasm contracts on Osmosis in order to set up the bridge. Osmosis does not yet allow unauthorized deployment, although this is a highly discussed topic. From my point of view, we should first decentralize the Osmosis front-end and only authorize the implementation of applications on the official Osmosis front-end. Let developers deploy their applications on the liquidity hub specific to the assets that are meeting. Osmosis is a unique meeting place in all of crypto, with so many fun applications possible. For example, what other stablecoin than Membranes can have multi-chain assets as collateral? A stablecoin backed by BTC, Atom, TIA and ETH is more diversified and resilient than a DAI backed by ETH and other centralized stablecoins for diversification. Osmosis is as much a market maker project as it is a bridge project. Integrations of projects dedicated to bridging are fundamental. The growing adoption of IBC, ZK Lite clients, data availability, and restaking are all technological advancements that promise a secure, interoperable future, particularly interesting for Osmosis, which is the most bridge-dependent application. 
It should be noted that other bridges than Omnity will provide BTC to Osmosis, and the different wrapped BTCs will create a lot of fragmentation. This is natural for a liquidity meeting hub, that's why the lab has devised a potion that can merge different fluids as long as the DNA is identical. This potion offers new liquidity that will be considered the native or canonical asset of Osmosis. This means that a client requesting a BTC solution from the lab will be served from this potion, which contains NBTC, WBTC, CKBTC, WBTC.AXL, etc. This solution is called the Alloyed Asset. It's important to remember this for the future. This Alloyed BTC is both less sensitive to bridge hacks by diversifying its origin and provides a better user experience by operating in the same manner as centralized exchanges. Binance, too, does not specify the source of the asset. The Penumbra team has announced the tokenomics and different launch phases for the token and features. We have just entered phase one. In phase zero, the airdrops were claimed. By the way, if you want a presentation of the project and the eligibility conditions, check out this previous video. In phases 0 and 1, IBC transfers and the DEX are disabled. Only governance, transfers between wallets and delegation are functional. It's also very important to note that Penumbra does not have an official front-end or RPC. It is the first fully decentralized project from end to end in crypto since Bitcoin. Bitcoiners have always transacted from self-hosted nodes. Similarly, community RPCs exist, but anyone can self-host their own ultralight node to interact with the blockchain or among themselves before the blockchain. It might seem strange, but interacting among oneself is exactly what rollups do before having their transactions validated by Ethereum. Penumbra is not the type to fit into a specific category. Don't talk to them about Layer 2 and Layer 1. At this stage, we are all someone's L1 and someone else's L2. What we can say is that the founders of Penumbra had an architecture in mind that allows for private use cases that are still unavailable, but they themselves don't yet know how Penumbra will be used in the future. While it is clear that private transfers and exchanges will be available at launch, discussions about dark rollups on top of Penumbra are just beginning. Penumbra could become a private settlement layer where different dark rollups would deposit their data. Discussions beyond my understanding about the possibility of implementing a private posting and verification space next to Celestia's for all rollups are emerging. They all are operating on the same view of, of what information is out there. So this is a, a cool idea, but one thing that is actually not required is that the data that is posted to this underlying base layer should actually be visible to anyone beyond the rollup participants. But this doesn't necessarily have to be the case. So what I would uh, suggest that people do is actually look to shielded chains for design examples of how to do this. And the thought process is like maybe actually this is an op opportunity to build some kind of uh, system using rollup where all of the uh, participants in this committee can be posting encrypted messages to each other to this big uh, global DA layer like Celestia, but they're restricting the visibility to only be the, the members of their own little committee. Um, so I think this is a really interesting thing to think about. Looks a lot like a dark roll-up, right? So this is kind of a fun word. Um, we can invent our own meaning for it and uh, design new kinds of roll-ups. Once the community chaos is stabilized, with various RPCs and validators in place, phase one can begin. After a governance vote, Penumbra will activate its IBC module to pave the way for the final phase. Phase two will allow the UM token to be transferred into the interchain. This will lead to the price discovery of the UM token, whether on Osmosis or its own DEX, with external tokens being exchanged for UM. In total, there will be 100 million UM tokens. The 16% UM airdrop is evenly distributed between interchain developers and users. They will be directly available, as will the 20% allocated to the foundation dedicated to supporting the Penumbra protocol through grants. 25% are in the community pool and thus controlled by the DAO. The tokens for investors and the development team are locked for a minimum of one year, up to four years. This includes 4.5% for Radiant Commons, a non-profit entity that supports the ecosystem. Only 3.65% for Penumbra Labs, the original developers of Penumbra. 
12.5% for contributors, 17.2% for various investors. The token is obviously used to secure and govern the Penumbra blockchain. Penumbra has 100 million tokens but also 2% inflation per year to incentivize staking. Stakers are also compensated with transaction fees on the shielded multi-asset blockchain. Penumbra minimizes MEV through its particular ordering of swaps and encryption of transactions. Nevertheless, there are opportunities for asset arbitrage in different liquidity pools, allowing the protocol to burn UM through arbitrage MEV. Penumbra uses an alternative POS system that allows stakers to delegate their tokens privately while still receiving staking rewards, even though the protocol does not know how many UM tokens you have delegated. Delegators receive a fraction of the validator in exchange for their UM. They essentially become shareholders of a tokenized validator, and Penumbra only sends the rewards to the validators when they validate blocks. This has the same effect as having a liquid staking token in exchange for delegation, except that there are as many liquid staking issuers as there are active Penumbra validators. This means 100 different UMs, which does not facilitate its integration into DeFi, being too fragmented and not liquid enough. That's why I propose an alloyed osmosis pool as soon as possible to make all these tokens fungible into a single canonical staked UM. There is also the classic liquid staking solution from Stride, which will delegate the UM to different validators and issue a STUM in exchange. I prefer the alloyed solution since it offers excellent liquidity conditions for exchanging the already staked UMs, whereas Stride offers a solution only for those who have not yet staked. An alloyed pool would be an opportunity for Osmosis to once again increase its liquidity and volume with a new high-value token issuer. It is quite rare to see a single issuer emit fragmented liquidity. It is an opportunity for Osmosis to offer an additional service beyond its usual market making. Osmosis's DeFi ecosystem has the best maturity in the cosmos, and a native liquid staked token on Osmosis will also offer the possibility to benefit from the much anticipated mesh security. It is not guaranteed that privately staked UM can benefit from restaking from its entirely private chain. On Osmosis, this SSUM, secretly staked UM, would be transparent and restakeable at the center of mesh security. I took advantage of this week's news to share some ideas and concepts with you. I hope you enjoyed this video, and don't forget to subscribe and like the video for more content like this.